AFib is becoming an epidemic. To the point, 10 million Americans are expected to have atrial fibrillation by 2030. AFib is an irregular and rapid heart rhythm. So is AFib not only affecting your heart, but it's also hijacking your peace of mind? Not to worry, you're not alone. It's time to take it back. So living with AFib is already tough enough, but when you add in anxiety and stress to the mix, uh, it just feels downright overwhelming. So today we're going to talk about how you can manage your mental health, uh, ease your anxieties, also uh, just regain some sense of calmness and peace. So before we dive in, I do want to make sure that to let you know that this information is purely for educational purposes only. And these are from my personal experiences. Also, please follow medical advice uh, from your doctors. With that being said, let's jump right in. So let's start off first thing first. Why does AFib make uh, stress and anxiety much worse? So it's actually a bit of a cycle, right? Uh, your heart starts beating irregularly, and all of a sudden your brain starts to say, hey, something is wrong. So next thing you know, your body responds to that thought, right? Something is wrong. Now you have all these thoughts racing in your head, right? Fear, worry, which then at that point, anxiety and stress levels start to go up. So the tricky part about having stress, your stress levels and, and, and anxiety level up is that it could also trigger AFib and make it worse. So you're in this constant vicious cycle, right, of uh, irregular heartbeat, stress and worry, and next thing you know, it's just a constant, constant cycle that it just feels like, for whatever reason, it just won't stop. It won't go away. So breaking this cycle, I mean, it, it can feel like it is impossible, but there is a way. And so I want to talk about a couple of things that I believe that will could definitely help you. So I had to cut my walk short because it started raining. So I'm going to do the rest of this video in my truck. So uh, let's jump right in. So again, I want to focus on just some comic anxiety triggers uh, for folks that have AFib. Uh, I feel that some folks may be aware, may not be aware of these triggers. So I just want to make sure I cover everything. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of them. Number one was a, a big one for me, which is the, the fear of the next AFib episode. Um, so there'll be days where, or even a couple of hours where I'm like, you know, I don't have any episodes and all of a sudden one comes out of nowhere. Also, when the episode does happen, uh, the feeling of just being out of, you know, you don't have no control over it, right? Especially when your heart's fluttering or if it skips. Um, sometimes I did feel um, when I was highly stressed, either at work or just dealing with something in my personal life, where uh, I would have more episodes and I would stay in AFib much longer. I mean, for hours. Um, and looking back, I did, I do realize I was really in those situations, very stressful. And then um, in some cases, and it may not be for you, uh, I know it was for me, but just worrying about maybe how others would feel um, if I had an episode out in public, right? So these are just some of the triggers that can make you feel constantly on the edge. Uh, the good news is there are ways to manage these triggers, uh, but before we jump into the solutions, um, it's important to recognize them first and just to make sure that you're aware of how they may affect you. So we're gonna go over some practical strategies uh, just to cope with anxiety. Um, all right, so let's talk about how we can break the cycle uh, and calm both our minds and our hearts uh, with five practical strategies you can start using actually today. Number one is deep breathing. Um, for me, this was something that I always use on a daily basis. Uh, it's simple but powerful, a way to calm your body uh, in stressful moments. Also take a deep breath, um, you know, maybe like a four count or five count and then hold it, right, for like 10 seconds and then exhale. And you just kind of repeat the process over and over again. Um, what it does, at least for me, uh, that it definitely sends a message to your brain saying, hey, we're good, we're safe, we're okay. And I found that like maybe within an hour or so, um, some of my, my AFib episodes will subside a little bit. Um, so that's number one, take some deep breaths. Number two, mindfulness and meditation. So mindfulness means just really just staying in the present. So you're nearly not allowing your thoughts just to spiral out of control. You know, you're not thinking about too much uh, in, in the future or what happened in the past, right? You just really stay in present. And it's really just really focusing on your headspace and finding a calm place, right? 
uh, just to guide through. So meditation, it's really something I encourage anyone um, with AFib really to explore. So the third thing I want to recommend is just talk about it. Right. Sometimes anxiety feels bigger when we try to deal with it alone. Right. Talking to someone that you trust, whether if it's a friend or a family member or maybe a counselor can make a huge difference. Just let them know how AFib affects you, your emotions. And it's just not about your heart. Right. So number three, talk about it. Number four, stay active, but gently. Uh, exercise is great for both the heart and the mind. Um, I'm not just talking about running, like running a marathon, but being gentle, like gentle activities such as just walking, maybe doing yoga, doing a light swim, right? Just releasing those endorphins, which helps really the natural stress relievers. And so, you know, just make sure that you check with your doctor first um, and know that it's safe for you to do exercises or be active. The fifth thing um, I really encourage everyone to do, especially if you just got diagnosed with AFib, is educate yourself. Uh, the more you know about AFib, the less it's scary. I mean, that's just kind of, for me, the reality it was, right? Educating yourself about your conditions, can it help reduce the feelings of uncertainty also? Um, read reliable sources, right? Um, and ask your doctor, of course, questions and empower yourself with the knowledge. So number five, Educate yourself. When would be, I guess, a good time to ask or seek professional help, right? Sometimes anxiety can be too big to handle on your own. Uh, if you find that your anxiety is interfering with your day-to-day -day life, right? Um, you can't focus at work. This may be a good time just to talk to a professional. Um, there, There's absolutely no shame in reaching out for help, uh, whether that's a therapist or a counselor or even your doctor. All right, so I want to kind of recap, I want to keep this video short and brief. Um, AFib and anxiety can create challenges um, or challenging cycles, right? But there are ways to manage both. Uh, deep breathing, as I mentioned earlier, uh, mindfulness, staying active, uh, talk to others, educating yourself are all great strategies to calm your mind and ease your heart. So if you're struggling with anxiety related to AFib, um, know that you're not alone. Uh, it's okay to take small steps. Uh, it's okay to ask for help. Managing anxiety takes time, but every little step brings you closer to feeling more in control. So what's the next step, right? So number one, I'm actually gonna leave a link below uh, the video here, pinned in the first uh, comment. And I wanna, I wanna give you um, my 10 top foods to avoid when you're having AFib. Uh, I feel that nutrition is a big part of managing and controlling your episodes. And so I will definitely list that in the link below uh, in the description as well as in the comments. Also, there I've also attached some additional resources if you really want to approach AFib uh, more in a natural way. Now for me, I had to use medication and also some natural remedies. But again, you know, everybody's different. And so for you know me, I want to make sure you have that information. And again, the link will be below in the description. So also, I want you, I want to encourage you to take a step towards better mental health by at least trying one of the strategies that we talked about today. Um, and if this video was helpful, uh, hit the like button so more people can find out about AFib. Don't forget to also subscribe for more insights on living well with AFib. And if you feel free to share this video with someone that you, you know, might know that's either been diagnosed or might have symptoms of AFib. So I want to thank you for watching today. Remember, managing your mental health is just as important as managing your heart health. And again, we're all in this together. So until next time, take care of yourself, listen to your doctor, and be sure to take your medication. All right, take care. Love you. See you next time. Bye for now.